and welcome to our moth and butterfly lesson. I'm standing next to a large bunch of swamp milkweed and we saw all different types of monarch butterflies fluttering around this bush earlier. And actually there might be one, yep, right up there right now. So of course monarch butterflies love milkweed plants, any, any type of milkweed plant. So of course their caterpillars feed on the leaves of a milkweed plant and the adult butterfly actually feeds on the nectar and pollinates um, all types of milkweed plants. So butterflies and moths are the most popular insect to collect because of their beauty and their color. They are part of the Lepidoptera order. They almost all have um, two pairs of wings, a forewing and a hind wing, and they're made up, uh, their wings are made up of little tiny uh, microscopic scales. Um, they undergo complete metamorphosis. So they have an egg, egg uh, stage, they have a larval stage, they have a pupil stage, and then they have an adult stage. And you may have seen the um, pupa state in a cocoon or with monarch butterflies, they are in a chrysalis or a chrysalis is a, uh, the pupa state without a cocoon. Now, how do you tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth? If you look really close, and we'll show you some examples of insects here in a little bit, but if you look really close at their antenna, butterflies have long, thin, thread-like antennas with a bulb at the end. Moths, on the other hand, have feathery structures on their antenna. Butterflies, when they land and they are at rest, will fold their wings up uh, vertically like this. Moths, when they are at rest, their wings are folded down and out. Now, have you ever heard of a skipper? A skipper is another type of um, insect in the Lepidoptera order. And they also have thread-like antenna, but they have a little bit different um, structure on the end than butterflies. So they have bulbs at the end of their antenna, but they also have a hook-like structure. So you have moths, butterflies, and skippers in the Lepidop Lepidoptera order. To get a closer look at butterflies, sometimes entomologists use traps. And we have made a homemade trap here, and we've put some fermented fruit in the bottom of this trap. So we're going to check this trap to see if we have any butterflies up in here. Um, on the bottom, we've got a uh, tray that I can release here, just held on there by paper clips. But in the bottom, we have this gross looking bait that I've got some bananas, I put some yeast in there and some sugar on there. And it's just a little little piece of uh, plywood that I got at the craft store. And we hung it on the bottom of our hoop here. So we're gonna check. I know we've got some butterflies up in there, so we're gonna check what kind of butterflies that we've caught today. All right, we brought the net down, or the trap down. And it looks like we have four different butterflies in there and several different flies of all different sizes. There's another funny looking bug insect right there. Um, but I'm gonna collect these and then we're going to see if we can figure out what kind they are. Um, we've, ha we've had this trap up for just a few hours here in this um, wooded area. So these are obviously butterflies that um, are hanging around in the woods today. So we, when we are looking them up and we are trying to identify those, we will want to look at their markings and also make sure that their um, habitat um, is the woodland areas. So let's see if I can get one of these into my container here. Hmm, I have two guys on there. Let's see if I can get another one in the same one. All right, I've got two of them. I have two different species in here. And again, we'll need a collecting jar. Obviously, when you have a trap, you need a, something to put them in. I've just used a tennis ball container here. So there, it's clear, so 
kiddos can see through them um, and see what kind of species we have in here. So we're going to go ahead and take these back, get out our identification guides and our uh, phone apps and see what kind of butterflies we have. Here we have a few examples of butterflies you can find in Illinois. First off is our Illinois state insect, the monarch butterfly. And monarch butterfly have the characteristic orange, black, and white coloration on it. It's actually a migrating butterfly, comes here during the warm months, and travels thousands and thousands of miles to overwinter in Mexico. Its host plant is milkweed. Um, the caterpillars and the adults like to feed on the nectar. The caterpillars like to feed on the milkweed plant. Um, we are seeing that there's um, decreasing numbers of monarch butterflies because we don't have as many milkweed plants. So people and um, citizens have been planting more milkweed to help hopefully improve the population of monarch butterflies. This butterfly is the buckeye butterfly. And what's cool about it is it has eye spots. And some animals and insects use these eye spots, these dark black circles, to try to throw off predators. So it's a defense mechanism. Um, they, find, they want to show predators that they're looking at them so the predators won't eat them. So the buckeye has really cool eye spots. It also migrates down to the southern states in, Il in the United States to overwinter. So it is also a migrating butterfly. So earlier, earlier we talked about the difference between a moth and a butterfly. So this is a type of moth. I'm not sure what type of moth it is, but you can see very, very clearly in this picture that this is a moth. Do you see its antennas? Its antennas have a feathery look rather than a bulbed antenna of the sulfur butterfly. We'll show you the bulbed antenna of the sulfur butterfly. See the bulb there at the end of the sulfur butterfly's antenna? That's, where, that's how you know that that is a butterfly. This is actually one of the butterflies that we caught in our butterfly trap. We have identified it as a comma butterfly. You can really see how this comma butterfly camouflages itself. It looks like a leaf. See how its wings are pointed and the coloration looks like a dead leaf that might be um, hanging onto a tree or on the ground. Now, right here in this area, you see this white kind of curved line. And that tells us that this is a comma butterfly. There is also a butterfly out there that we've caught in our trap that is called a question mark. And I'll show you a picture here of what a question mark butterfly looks like. They're very similar. They have a little bit of wing shape difference, but this little line right here, if it's connected, it is a comma butterfly. If there is a little dot and a space between, and it looks like an exclamation point, it is a question mark butterfly. So this is very common woodland area butterfly um, here in Illinois. Thank you for joining us today and learning about different types of moths and butterflies. We hope that you are able to get outside and start collecting some butterflies or moths and maybe start your own butterfly collection.